Hey guys, I'm Matt, the South Coast kook. I'm just a kook that loves to chat everything surfing. And today on the show, I've got Sarah and Brett. How are you going, guys? Yeah, good. Thanks, Matt. How are we're, you? We're awesome, mate. We're always good. Ah, awesome to hear. So I'd let you introduce yourself. Give us a little intro of who you are. Well, my name is Brett Gibson. Um, I'm Sarah's husband and also carer. Um, Sarah's uh, a visually impaired surfer uh, with a category of uh, B2. Um, and um, she's, yeah, she's classified for the Paralympics. Uh, she's, also, she's also represented Australia, um, Surfing Australia, um, in a world title competition last year in December. Uh, she got second in that competition. So she's, yeah, she's uh, a, 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 an accomplished surfer um, and my lovely wife. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, awesome. um, I can, uh, my name's Sarah, obviously. Um, so do you want, I, I can give you a bit of background on um, on how I lost my vision and things like that, if that's what Yeah, well, that was literally going to be my next question. So yeah, go for it. Um, yeah. Um, so I, uh, a day before my 10th birthday, I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, and I had, had had type 1 diabetes for 25 years in saying that. I have had a double transplant um, in 2009. I had a kidney and a pancreas because I went into um, renal failure. Um, so I had that was 13 years yesterday. Actually, was my anniversary for having my double transplant. Um, in the meantime of having diabetes, in my early 20s, I started to lose my vision. Um, so when you're a diabetic, the fine capillaries in the back of your eye burst and they fill up with blood, and that causes blindness. Um, I can, I'm live, we live on the central coast and we went to a, um, ophthalmologist up here and he pretty much took one look and went, I can't really help you. I need to send you down to Sydney to the best guy. And when I saw him, I, he didn't know whether he'd be able to save any of my sight or not. Um, <clears throat> I had two years of pretty intense, um, laser therapy on my eyes, which is pretty much burning the back of your eye to seal up any bleeding. Um, and because of that process, I lost all peripheral vision. Um, so I can't see sideways or up and down. So I'm constantly, Brett's like my guide dog because I'm always running into stuff. Um, and he, um, yeah, so I've got, I've lost a lot of central vision in one eye and no peripheral vision in the other, in both eyes. So that's pretty much how I lost my sight. Um, but going back to, yeah, I had a, um, so I went into, um, renal failure and had a double transplant. So I no longer have type one diabetes, which is fantastic. However, um, about five years after the transplant, I developed uh, three different types of cancers because you're immunosuppressed. So I dealt with those. Um, we're in remission at the moment. Um, and I also stopped work. I was a school teacher for 20 years and um, took up surfing. And a year into surfing, I broke my hip. So <laughs> that was four years ago, uh, or actually probably, yeah, four years ago. Um, and I, like Brett said, we um, we went over to California in December last year. I had a pretty dodgy hip, so I was sort of forced to crawl to my feet because it's my front leg. Um, but we still managed to get second in the world, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Like such a... a, a... There's a lot that's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, unbelievable. Um, so you said you've only surfed for four years, is that right? Um, probably five in total. Yeah. Um, yeah, after my acetabulum break, um, I'm just gonna take my jacket off. Um, yeah. I I um I was out for probably three months and then I forced myself to to get back in and um sort of had to adapt to so initially I was going into adaptive surfing thinking I would get in for my leg because I couldn't pull my leg through because it was my front leg. So I had to pretty much crawl to my feet and I applied to go to adaptive surfing um, into the contest for my leg. And because the um, amputees, so they used to let categories in with injuries like mine. However, the amputees sort of said, look, it's a bit unfair because they've got ankles and we don't have an ankle and it's an advantage. So... I wasn't able to get in for my leg, but um, I had mentioned that I, my sight was pretty bad too because I, I can't drive or anything like that. Um, and so I had some testing done and then, yeah, so I ended up going in for my eyes. 
However, I feel my leg was probably more of a disadvantage than my eyes. So, yeah. Anyway, we still so, got <laughs> with with that. So, like, there's different categories in the Olympics for the the Paralympics. So, like, yeah. there's a whole like a, a heat of people with like bad legs versus bad vision. Is that how it works? Yeah. Well, they haven't actually finalised the categories for the Olympics yet for the Paralympics. But in the world titles, um, there's, um, yeah, amputees, so it can be upper limb, so like a, an, an arm, um, or lower limb, so like a leg. Um, it can also be paraplegics, and there's actually a couple of quadriplegics that went in, and they have catches and pushes, so they're proning, obviously, lying, lying down. Um, and then there's a visually impaired category as well. So it's the visually impaired categories stand, and there's two two divisions. Totally, so, yeah. So you've got partial vision, and then you've got totally blind. And to see um, anybody in the water that has these types of um, significant injuries and 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 uh, permanent damage to their eyes is amazing to watch. It really it, it really lifts your, your um your your spirits in in how you appreciate how these people adapt to 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 surfing. For a normal surfer, if you stub your toe, that puts you off, you know. But yeah. for uh, for these people to be um, permanently maimed, um, uh, you know, uh, it's just amazing to see, and such a um, you know, it's an honour to be a part of it. Yeah. Oh, 100%. hundred um, percent. So, so Brett, um, what, how long have you been surfing for, mate? What's what's your background? Uh, um, my background is I, I've always been brought up around the water. Um, I've Started surfing when I was about five or six um, and continued uh, to be um, either sailing or on the water surfing or windsurfing. So there's multi facets that I, that I went into with uh, with all my water sports. Um, but mainly, yeah, yeah, since I was five or six, I've been surfing. So, yeah, a long time. I won't tell you how old I am, but <laughs> I'm 51, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um so what boards are you riding? Um, yeah, what's your brand? What's your make? Yeah, we um we a good friend of ours, um Darren Burge at DeBurge Surfboards on the Central Coast. He's amazing and he's um like so when I first broke my leg or my hip, he um he adapted a board. It was like honestly, we called it the QE2 because it was like humongous and it was like a hundred liters and it was but it what it's I needed it so I could get into the waves early and and take my time to get up and stuff. And then he's adapted. We've come down in size. Um, and hopefully after, when I get back into it, we'll come down again. So at the moment, uh, for the competition that we won, I, I was on a 7-2, um, purely because of the get up, because I could, I had to use just one rail and crawl up. But I'm hoping to go down in size when I can eventually pop up again. And Brett's, Brett's board's in the background there. He rides... <laughs> Darren, yeah. whatever boards. The, the Darren boards, could boards. Run a they're fantastic boards. I, I haven't folded one board that I've got from Darren, and I probably have about maybe thirty out the back. Um, so there's, uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, to, he's, he's also, uh, he's yeah. a very good um, uh, person to relate to for the adaptive side of things. He started to um, shape more and more boards for uh, for para surfing, para team. surfing team. So. Uh, he's doing proning boards. Uh, he's doing um, stand-up boards. So there's all different shapes that he can um, help out with. Yeah. 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 Sweet. So is there like a, a best wave of your life that sort of sticks out for both of you? Um, mm. Tricky um, question, I know. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Probably you mine. <laughs> <laughs> Or half time. Um, I love I love our local break. I love surfing on the point and like there's been there's so it's such a nice wave and um, yeah I I probably can't pick one. I probably have said that's the best wave I've ever caught and then I've forgotten about it. Yeah, <laughs> probably half tide at um at, up at Evans Head. That's um, another little local spot we like to hit every now and then. Um, it's a fantastic wave. Oh yeah, and on the right right conditions it's um yeah it's got it all going just a little bit sharky though oh, okay yeah <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> so brett um you're a surf coach is that correct mate oh uh, yeah with central coast surf academy yeah uh, um is there a, a different technique or a different approach you have for uh teaching someone that is visually impaired or slash your own wife is there a... <laughs> yeah well, absolutely look, look, <laughs> 
when we get into competitions, um, instead of, you know, using go right, go left, um, or, uh, anything like that, we sometimes go into either um, a clock face. So I'll say one o'clock or 11 o'clock, and that'll be the position and change that she'll make uh, in her paddling. So she'll either go to the left or the right, 11 o'clock or one o'clock. Um, hard sort of right would be three o'clock and hard left would be say nine o'clock. So um, that's for totally blind as well. Uh, we, we try to use that um, and we use a, count, a countdown sort of mechanism where when a wave's coming and I want them to uh, you know, start paddling for the wave, it would be like countdown backwards from three. So three, two, one, and then they're, they're basically on the wave. Um, it's the same when they're paddling back out uh, for my totally blind guys. Um, uh, there's uh, an approach when they're paddling back out. Uh, I have to actually yell at them and say, "Cooey, come this way towards me," because they're so fine-tuned with the, the hearing. They'll track my voice and start paddling at me, and then I have to count them into to duck diving. So another one, in other words, three, two, one, duck dive. So. But it's also yeah, dive deep. <laughs> if it's yeah. Like, or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah but yeah, yeah. It's I guess another part that he does for me is because I can't see down the line um, on a wave, he'll give me, you know, like tell me what's happening down the line. So he'll say to me, okay, so when you get to this point, cut back or or go around the white water and then keep going because I can't see down what's happening down the line. So those sort of tips are really good too. Mm. So he explains what the wave's doing so that when I'm on it, I know how to surf it. Sort of so thing. sometimes I can get on the same wave as Sarah if I can count her into that wave, if I get her set up. So I'll be tracking just underneath her, her wake, um, just behind her, and I'll be yelling instructions pretty much as she's on the way. Yeah, yeah. Cr crazy. Because, like, um, there'd be a lot of traffic out there. If, there. if you're doing a heat, I assume there's, like, what, three people in the water or is it just? In the world titles, we had five. Wow. Five and that's... And heavy. you're trying to like spot each other into the wave. Yeah. You're yeah, trying yeah. to like, and then you've got people in the background probably yelling out stuff as well. Yeah, so there's 10, because everyone has a spotter in the water, uh, the visually impaired people. So you have 10 people in the water at one time and it's, and like interference comes into it too. So even with the totally blind people. So if you're, you know, if you're paddling out and someone's taken off and you're in front of them, it's an interference. So it's all that, like that's where the caddy or the, um, the coach has to be really like, you know, specific with where you need to be because you can't see what's happening around you. And it's, yeah. Yeah. So, if you, if you cause interference, it's just like um, losing a wave pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. And, that, and like, even that, for Brett. So yeah, the that must be super hard for you too, Brett, like to, to be focusing yeah. on the wave ahead for Sarah, but at the same time, like trying to, I don't know, surf, not like, you know what I mean? Like it must yeah. be a lot to juggle. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, I feel the pressure in Sarah's um, competitions as much as I do in my own. So there's, yeah, there's um, there's a lot of pressure put onto the coaches, um, and it is yeah, it's our responsibility responsibility to keep them uh, safe as well. So that's got to be uh, what I focus on is the safety aspect and looking out for her in the water. Like, don't screw up or you won't be coming home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want a podium. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you've got the podium, you got silver, um, yeah. and that was, like you said, in California, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah Pismo Beach. Uh, the water temperature was? 14. 14. It was freezing. 12. Yeah. I it was. yeah. So cold. And, like, size of waves and stuff like that? Like, what are we talking here? Well, the, there was a range from, say, you know, two foot up to five foot. Um, so there was a couple of days where it was quite solid. Yeah. And um, then the, for the finals, it sort of backed back down to a normal range or a smaller range anyway. Yeah. Which is a bit more manageable. They try to make it, I think they try to pick a spot they know is not going to get a whole lot of swirl because you've got paraplegics and, and you know, quadriplegics and things going out in the water too. So they need to, I don't think, like, is it, I think the Olympics, the, the, the Olympics this year, we're not in it, the Paralympics doesn't have surfing Olympics, in it this year. Yeah. Is that Chow? What is it called? Chapu. Chapu. And Brett's like, oh, get ready for it. I'm like, is it going to turn in? <laughs> yeah. The disabled surfers into that. I don't think so. So yeah, they're they're mindful of the, that, that the conditions. Been, yeah, that would have been a challenge. Yeah. Was yeah. it? So like we said, you got silver. Uh, who got gold? Ah, uh, a girl. She's beautiful. A, uh, a young girl. I say young because she's only about 
26. 20. Yeah. Um, uh, from England. Her name's Melissa Reed. She got um, first, yeah. She's, she's, that was her third world title. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And but, was, um, it, was it like, like he's going over as a team or were you just representing Australia? No, we went over as a team. Um, yeah. yeah, it was awesome. It, it was really like a really, the whole event actually was, um, you know, like, you know, surf competitions are, are competitive, but this one was just because every single person was there. Like there was honestly 20-year-old guys from um, like Spain, say, or wherever, who had been at war and had walked on like a, a landmine and lost both their legs, both their arms, had wanted to just give up on life and they found surfing or so they prone like and it just it, it gave them something to live for you know and it was just such that was the whole even though it was a competitive it was nice competitive you know nice competition where everyone like it didn't matter what country you were from everyone was cheering everyone on and it was just like there's 24 countries and it was just incredible like everyone was so supportive and just beautiful it was really like a really nice event yeah. to be be around and put you know a different different light on surfing I reckon just yeah amazing I bet you, it sounds like so much fun and like a bit of an eye-opener for everyone like to be out there and like good going for you 24 different countries you know I imagine there would have been heaps of competition and to come out with the silver you got to be stoked on that yeah, Brett, Brett trained me. He was training, we were training pretty hard. Like it was the, you know, like you'd get out and you'd look at the, because um, it was coming into our summer, right? So it was nor'east winds and nor'east swirls. And I'm like, oh, God, it was the shittiest conditions. And he'd be like, we're going out. I'm like, okay. Because, you know, we just didn't know what we were, we had never been there before and we didn't know what the conditions were going to be like. And so we thought, got to surf everything, right? So I can remember days just going, oh, this is the worst, like worst conditions ever. You'd never go out if you weren't like training. So we trained pretty hard for, for you know, three or four months leading up to it, yeah. Yeah. Have you done many stints overseas? Have you surfed any other overseas breaks? Brett surfed, um, what's it, Waikiki? Is that what yeah. It? What's it? Oh, over in Hawaii, yeah. yeah. We've surfed Hawaii. I've surfed um, over in Bali. Um, I've surfed most of the east coast of Australia. And, uh, yeah, it's... Australian surfing is, is so much nicer. Um, surfing back at home, I suppose. You can get a meat pie whenever you want sort of thing. So. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Full Aussie experience here. <laughs> I look at, like, Melissa Reed because um, we're friends on Instagram and stuff, and, you know, like, she's so rugged up in, like, like she's from England, obviously, and then a lot of the time they use a wave pool because the, there's no waves. And I think we're so lucky over here that we get, you know, we've got so many choices. You can always find a, a wave. So, yeah, it's an advantage in that way, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Got to ask, what's your favourite wax? Hueys. 100%. Hueys for sure. yeah. <laughs> Tony 100%. Marsh is a legend. And uh, the second yeah. I saw that you guys were sponsored, were like, you got to deal with them. I was like, I've got to get these guys on the show there. Yeah. They're the reason why I started this. This is why I've started this for you, people like you. Yeah, that's awesome. He's he's a legend, Tony. Yeah, yeah. unreal. It makes makes good product too. Smells yeah. nice. I, uh, <laughs> I had a, I was lucky enough to go visit him at the Willy Wonka of uh, Wax Factory, and it was awesome to see him uh, producing some goods. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, awesome. Should have got your fizz in the wax there. <laughs> There's a couple of blocks of wax with my thumbprint on them, so have a look for them. <laughs> Ah, yeah, awesome. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so where's the next one where's the next uh paralympics and will you be participating um there is the australian titles is on well for, for adaptive surfing the australian titles is on the 20th of august at port macquarie um i'm gonna say i probably won't be because i don't think i'll be up for surfing um although she, she has an entry into the, the yeah. australian titles I, I put the entry in for it. The day, the day I came out of surgery. Um, so I'm going to, I see the surgeons next week actually, and I'll, I'll see whether I'm allowed to get in the water. And if I can, I'll, I'll probably do that. Um, and then there's obviously the world titles again in December. I don't think I'll be up for that one, but I'll be in Hawaii in June next year. Definitely. So the, the, the Hawaiian event is um, at the start of a, the professional adaptive, sur uh, adaptive surfing circuit. 
Um, that's restarted up this year. So at the moment, there's a circuit going on where it's, uh, it's it was at Hawaii. Then it goes to um, Surf, Lakes. Surf Lakes, and then it goes to um, it goes back to America, and then it also goes over to to um, England. Uh, also goes to Spain, and then it goes over, back over to um, America for the US Open. So there's like six professional circuits or six professional competitions now for adaptive surfing. Uh, we're going to hit the, most of them up next year. So we'll be chasing that little circuit and um, hoping to get our names in the, you know, on the dais sort of thing and, and podium. Is that, kind of, is that kind of the goal, is it, the circuit? Or is gold at the Olympics sort of more prior? Or is it kind of just comparing apples and apples? Apples and apples, but also the Olympics, um, it's just to get a bit more uh, heat exposure um, and leading up to um, selection for the Olympics, which will be in 2028. So that's definitely going to be going ahead and that'll be in um, uh, Los Angeles. So it'll be on Cal in California. So, yeah. Um, is there much government funding or anything for these kind of events? No. I Zero. Yeah. So this is the first. So they've been, you know, um, there's... Uh, a local guy called Mark Mono Stewart. He's um, and a leg amputee, um, and he kneels, and he's been fighting for about years, decades, like, decades, to try to get adaptive surfing in the professional realm so it can be a paid event. And it's this is the first year it's happened. So he's absolutely stoked, um, and he's a legend. And so um, there's prize yeah. money involved now, but. There's no government funding, so we had to fund our own trip over to America for the world titles. Um, no acknowledgement, you know, like, yeah, it's a, it's pretty sad, actually. When you think about those, these are the athletes that kind of have to work even harder than the average person to achieve it, their goals. So, but... It's, it's sad to see that, like, um, your, your WSL or, like, the top of the top, they're on that much money and earning that much, you know, sponsorships, the works, um, to just have like even 10% of that funding towards just like, yeah, I, I assume that he's not asking for money. You just want to get over there. You want to compete. You want to have. That's right. Yeah. It's, we're hard up actually scratching around to, to get companies to, to throw some product at us. So um, Huey's is unreal. Yeah. Huey's yeah is unreal. Tony, I know Tony would be all over this for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, uh, it's yeah, definitely there's a, a little bit of um, discrimination in that re regards where it's a little bit unfair that these guys who work so hard to, to, to train for these events um, aren't getting the same sort of recognition as um, any other athlete. So like, to my listeners who, um, who listen to this, is there like charity groups or is there some sort of um, group that they can follow or donate to that actually goes towards you guys or there is absolutely nothing really there's like nothing Australia really don't do anything or no there's nah. nothing really set up there's no real there's no real sort of like foundation or base there so it would you would need someone to set something like that up in order for that to work um i'm sure there'd be people out there who'd, who'd be keen on doing that uh, um yeah at the moment we just rely on sort of uh if we're after some sort of donation we we put up a GoFundMe page or something like that to help fund um, some sort of, um, you know, travel expenses. The thing is too, you find like probably like myself um, and my eyes, also the transplant and the cancers had a lot to do with it, but I've had to not work. Like I've had to leave teaching. Like I was a school teacher and I had to retire. I had to medically retire. So you're living on a pension. And I think a lot of the, if you, if you look at the, you know, the condition of a lot of the athletes, there's probably a lot of people that are, not in fantastic jobs so you know like you're not rolling in money either and but you're trying to get yourself to all these events and yeah it's tricky situation so but i mean yeah we choose to do it too so yeah it's up to yeah, yeah yeah i can see the stoke in your face like when you're talking about surfing and about like the big picture of gold medals and like just to have Look, uh, well, any GoFundMe page you guys do or anything like that, you share it with me. I'll share it with my listeners and my following. Not that I've got anything that's amazing, but every little dollar I imagine helps. So it really does. Yeah. yeah. It really does. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to touch a little bit on the um, Vision Australia work that you guys have done. Um, I noticed that you guys set up like a small surf school. Uh, yeah. If, if you want to elaborate on that for sure. 
Yeah, well, that's that was run through um, Central, Central Coast Surf Academy. We do it every year. Um, we do it every year, um, and it's um, it's a, it's a really it's a fundamental, basic sort of introduction to to surfing for for people who have dis, who have uh, vision impairments. All ages. Too. Uh, of all ages. So we we usually get a, a good crowd of people come down to that one, um, probably up to ten people, and um, we just get them out into into the ocean and and share the stoke of catching waves and, and, and get them up and riding um, in, in hope that we, we can develop somebody to come into the Australian surf team in the future. Yeah. Do you get many returners? Yes, yes. We get regular returners yeah. and, um, yeah, they, they, shoot, they absolutely have the best time when, yeah. when, these, when these events go yeah. down. Yeah. They usually run it over like a, um, a three or four-week period, so it's, you know, every weekend for three weeks is the vision of straight like so they yeah so different people come at, at different times and then the same people come back as well and yeah so it's pretty cool is um is this at avoca too is this up near you guys yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. this is uh yeah it's held annually at avoca and mm. yeah i suppose um yeah just have to look out for um vision australia to release the post to to see whether or not when it's on or surf academy or, yeah. or the central coast surf academy yeah yeah so, like, um, I assume that both of you kind of coach a lot of the visually impaired people that come up to do the surfing. Is there a sort of a different technique that you kind of approach or is it um, case by case sort of basis? Yeah, it, it, it is a little bit more hands on. We need more, um, more people in the water just uh, if people aren't sort of introduced or haven't been introduced to the surf before. Um, we just need people to sort of help catch the, the the person on the shoreline and send them back out. But normally these people are just so enthralled in in the movement of the ocean, um, they get into a pattern straight away and they they can they 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 really enjoy it. It's yeah, the only way to say. It. I think um, we had Maddie Formstrom, who's also a um, well, he's in the same category as me for um, parasurfing. Um, he's a two-time or three-time world champion as well. Um, he came to one of our events and it was it was really cool because what he did first was he just said, right, we're going to just put all the boards down and we're just going to walk in and just feel the ocean so they could feel how the ocean was moving. And so that's how they started the, to, to get that feel that, you know, of the ocean before any surfing sort of happened. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, do you... Do you use a sort of similar approach, Sarah, or is it kind of um, like, do you have a bit of a feel as well? Or is it mostly like you're relying on spotters? I rely on Brett a lot. I do. And usually he'll, we'll stand on the shore and he'll tell me what's happening um, with the waves before we go in and he'll give a plan to paddle out and um, to not get worked, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, so um, I, he, often we sit out there and we just watch how the waves break to start with or, you know, feel how they break and and, and I might pull back on a few because it feels like, oh, hang on, not right, yeah, um, until I sort of get in the zone and then, yeah, yeah. then we're off. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of trust in your uh, spotter for sure. 100%, yeah, especially when there's this, I don't know, I've, um, I've, I've been working on my um, – swimming while I've been um, in rehab. And so I have I got held under in, t um, in New Zealand when we were vis visiting one of uh, Brett's brother and it sort of freaked me out a bit. So I got a bit panicky with, with bigger waves because I can't see them coming. And so I rely on Brett a lot to, to let me know if there's a set coming. So he'll be like, paddle to the horizon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, or if he's on the shore, which very rarely happens if he takes me out, because I can't see where he's pointing or anything when he's on the shore, obviously. Um, but he'll use a whistle command. So three whistles means there's a set coming and I know to paddle out. So, But he will, I'll only go out if there's other people that I know and Brett's on the shore. So, um, yeah, our local break's pretty good. Everyone knows my condition and who's super supportive. So that's really cool. Awesome. Awesome. So what's planned for the future? Get my leg better. Yeah. Start. Fingers crossed. Um, and then win gold. Win gold. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I don't like coming second. <laughs> <laughs> Drives the passion even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use the excuse of my leg, but still doesn't sit well with me. I'm like, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there'll be there'll be a lot of training between now and then. So yeah. We'll focus on the training and get um get it get Sarah's strength back in her, her in her leg. 
um, and yeah, get the hip joint moving properly. And then we'll start doing water um, exercises and then we'll pretty much start from scratch and um, get her back up to that uh, level where she's um, able to represent Australia again. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So mm -hmm. I've got one last question for both of you. Yeah. What does surfing mean to you? Uh, <laughs> it means, you go first. oh, I don't know. I've got to think about it. You go first. I've got to think. Oh, surfing's second nature, second nature to me. So it's it's like breathing. So for me, it's uh, it's also a spiritual thing, um, just to feel the the ocean and the power that it 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 it, 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 it actually just en engulfs you. So yeah, all those types of things, the spirituality and also the the freedom that you get from the water. It's, it's such a beautiful thing. That's cool. Yeah, Brett sort of has an affinity with the ocean. Um, to me, it's um. It's just that stoke that you get when you surf a wave. I just, there's no feeling like it. Like you said from the start, like I was a, um, I was a competitive runner when I was younger and um, I had to stop that because I got too sick with my um, kidney failure. But um, surfing is like no other stoke that you, in the world. And um, I really miss it. <laughs> and I've been out of the water now for 10 weeks and it's almost killing me. But um, that gives me determination to get back in there, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I can just, um, I could just imagine like that drive and that passion to get gold, um, and to you know, you, four or five years, like you said, like you must remember your first wave to now, and just total stoke. Oh yeah, like, I thought I was ripping when I was first. <laughs> <laughs> you were, darling. You were. I'm like, oh my god, I can go across the wave. <laughs> it's like... did, you, did you think yeah. after catching that first wave that you'd be representing Australia? No way. I actually, my dream when I was a kid was to represent Australia in running, in middle distance running. That was always my dream. I had a picture of this Olympian on my wall um, and I used to, you know, put a chart up and write all my times down and everything. Never thought of being surfing. No. Nah. <laughs> so what about you, Brett? Were you just, you just knew your coaching skills would get her there, mate? Or did you see potential on the first couple of waves? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll back myself there for sure. Yeah. Um, my main goal is to get Sarah to the Paralympics. I, I want to see her succeed in, in that regard. So um, it's, it's going to be a, a fight to get there and it, it'll be a fight to get to the, to the podium. So it, it, we'll, we'll get there. And um, he's, he's pretty hard on me, like in this, like when he's coaching, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> what would you give that? I go, what would you score that? And he goes, oh, two. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you it was a seven. I was thinking it was a seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Um, to all my listeners, we'll have to have a look at when you do a GoFundMe page and stuff like that. And hopefully someone out there starts some sort of foundation to really, you know, shine light on the sport. Not just like, not just surfing, but holistically, I assume it's across the board. Um, it's really, it's, it's hard for me to hear like that, you know, he's a pro surfers and you're just not getting that you know, the funding, like funding's everything in that kind of stuff. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah fly, um, you know, because especially to, if you really wanted to do that circuit, I mean, you'd be travelling to six different countries. Through, you know, how do you do that on a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a big budget. It is. At least, at least sponsorship. Like Huey's yeah. is awesome for wax, but, oh, you know, awesome. wax can only go so far, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's better than nothing. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we're grateful for that. Oh, yeah. Super grateful. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Matt.